Hey guys, Trisha here with another Road to Master video. Today we're starting our adventures midway through Diamond 3. And if I sound a little bit off today, it's because I spent yesterday uh, doing some casting for ESL. So you got in the uh, ESL Prem. That was a lot of fun, but my voice is pretty dead. And I feel a bit rough. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I don't feel 100%. So, uh, yeah, apologies if I don't sound particularly well, but... I it's still, it should be thematical for this video at least, because if you take a look at my player webcam, I look like death as well. So not only do I sound like it, you'll also get to see it too. Uh, I was really ill again when I made this video. This was a while back actually, like, we, we, we got some games to catch up on guys. We got a lot of games to catch up on. But still, I was really ill, uh, as you can tell. Like, whoops, one side of my face is swollen. <laughs> like, you can, it's just disgusting. Anyway, we're starting today off by playing some Nautilus, obviously our best top laner. Lovely playing Nautilus, he's really easy to play, really simple to play. And uh, the first game of the day, a pretty easy one, I don't have to do too much, playing up against Trundle, notoriously a uh, strong counter pick for tanks in the top lane because he reduces your armor and magic resist, steals all of your tank stats and makes you not so tanky, which then makes it obviously very hard to fight him. And as you can see, a bit earlier on, I did try to fight him, and I, well, to be fair, I got quite close. I put him on, like, 50 health, which is pretty, not too bad, but, you know, you just, <laughs> ugh, excuse me, you just can't really fight a tunnel. So, uh, yeah, not not the greatest one for one in the lane, but it's all good in the hood. Not too bad, first game of the day, and a victory under our belt. So we will definitely take that. We did get a lot of help from the Elise, so, so that's always nice to see. But we've got an S minus as well. Everyone on our team got an S, and that is a sub 20 minute victory. And not too bad as well on the stats either. Anyway, game number two, boys and girls. Going back to a one trick jungler, Hecarim. Hecarim, of course, what was that teleporting across my screen? Hecarim, of course, uh, very similar to play, just like Nautilus. Gets a lot of shit done. Very tanky, so it's good with initiations as well. And whenever I play against Yasuo, I always like to camp that lane. I think Yasuo lanes tend to be quite easy to kill because they're always pushing up really hard. And on top of that as well, Yasuos tend to tilt if you do camp them and they also snowball kind of hard as well. So if you can put them down in the ground a little bit, give them a few kills against the Yasuo, it's a lot harder for them to snowball. And they do make it fairly easy for you sometimes as well. So definitely worth going for if you want to play, if you're playing against Yasuo just to go for the, go for the camp on him. But still, good start to the game here. 2-0-2, two, two. my team has 5 kills. We're not doing particularly well, to be honest, as a team. Uh, we're almost half there, like half down on their kills. They got double our kills, pretty much. But as far as my inter individual contributions are going, I'm having a decent showing of things. So that's good in itself. Unfortunately, jumping in to try and assassinate the Ziggs leads to me being in a 1v4 situation, which, you know... Just generally speaking, 1v4 are not usually the favourable numbers that you're looking for when it comes to those fights. We're actually against Elise in this game, who is very strong as well as a Sonic jungler, especially if he starts popping off. And this guy was actually the Elise from my last game, who played very well as Elise and played very well as Elise in here as well. And I do believe he's a good young British boy, so that's even good. I, I, don't, I don't mind losing against good old English players, because then I can have some kind of... I don't know, national pride, I don't bloody know, I'm just, you know, kind of making things up now to make it a little more tasty to swallow the disgusting pill of defeat. Still, well, that's a bit of a spoiler, isn't it? You never know, we could come back and win this game, we do have one Nexus Tower that's on 10 health, and the Nexus, and we don't have a single tower on the map, but you never know, Solo Q, you could come back, but I, I, don't, I don't think that's going to happen this game, guys, I don't think that's going to happen. Yeah, we didn't have a good showing of things. We had uh, pretty much one, just one of those games, really. We didn't have... Whenever there's a game where you have no towers, but you as the jungler were kind of contributing a lot in the early game and, and getting kills and stuff, then you, you just know it's a bad game. I'm not, I'm not trying to say that I played perfectly and everyone else sucks. I'm just trying to say, like, that's just one of those games that... It's just one of those games, you know, and not able to do too much, and it doesn't really end too well for me, and boom, there you have it. Not a great showing at the end of the day. Moving on to game numero 2, as they say en Francais. Another Hecarim game. One trick junglers for the win. Knocking back the enemy target onto the grounded effect of Cassiopeia on her miasma. 
means that you can't flash away. So that's a pretty good play for the first blood. Going back straight again for the Ari as well. If you're going to let, let someone snowball, it's going to be the Cassiopeia. And I just realized, <laughs> I didn't know this before. I genuinely hadn't seen this until just now. I always look over these clips as well so that I can get a general sense of what's going on. But I just realized this Cassiopeia, Rao, this is one of the guys that I casted yesterday when I was doing my casting for the ESL Prem. I genuinely just realized that. He's a really good mid laner, like a really good mid laner. I honestly had no idea that that was this guy. Wow. Well, there you have it. He carried pretty hard last night when I was casting, and hopefully it means he can carry me too here today. I'm playing pretty weak, uh, scared, sorry, against this Nocturne, because, you know, if I'm on really low health, there's no pressure for me to make a kill. Don't need to force anything. It's okay. It's all right. I got something that you don't like. It's fine. We pick up the kills at the end of the day. All good in the hood. Getting a little bit ballsy onto the Ari here, not going to lie, but still... Not sure if that's worth my death because I was on a bounty, but it's not too bad. We also get a kill over onto the Caitlyn, who of course is a carry. So getting a kill onto the carry, generally speaking, is not a bad thing at all. Generally speaking, that is a good thing. You do want your ca your carries to be fed after all. How are they going to carry if they ain't fed? But this is a risky play. Barons like this are very risky plays. You don't really want to experience too many of these because they're 50-50 plays. If you are in a position where you're not necessarily losing the game, although if you look at the kill totals, it is very, very close. But if you're not losing the game, going for a play like this is quite risky. If we lost that Baron, this game would probably turn in the enemy's favor. But we get it, so that's okay. I still secure it, but you know, I still, I still feel like objectively speaking, it's a bit of a bad play. Even though it worked out well for us, I'm not I'm not convinced that that wasn't necessarily <laughs> a bad play. Still, some more team fights coming down here. Guardian Angel, I think, is a really good third item in general. No matter who you're playing, well, like junglers or top laners, uh, because it means that if you do get into these skirmishes, these fights as the game progresses around the 30 minute mark, it gives you a that second life in these small skirmishes is really useful, as you can see right there as well. So we pull out the victory there. There's the surrender vote. Not a bad game. Mr. Rao, who I casted and carried really hard, also carried me in my solo queue games. Beautiful stuff. And this puts us at Diamond 3, 71 LP. So we're kind of close to our Diamond 2 here. Oh, Clyde was in this game as well. I didn't even... And Delito. Ha! <laughs> okay, so... Clyde, you guys know Clyde. Clyde is... Uh, like a pro player, he's playing in the Challenger Series right now for Fnatic Academy, ex-LCS player. Delito, the top laner, is uh, the top laner for Vral's team. He was a guy I also casted. Funny that. Uh, I had no idea it was him as well. He's also a very good player. Delito and Vral are probably the two stars of that team that I casted. GLB Esports, if you're wondering what the team is, uh, they're, they're pretty good players. And there they are, both in the same game. Blimey, who'd have thought? Anyway, going back to our next game, Nautilus. Not too much champion diversity for this one, but still, there's a reason why I play a lot of Nautilus, because he's my best champion. So we're going to whip this guy out and see how it goes. 1-0-3 at the 11 minute mark is not a bad start. Could be a lot worse. I could be 0-4-0, and to be honest, considering whose video you're watching right now, that might not be too surprising to see. Either way, we're forcing things a little bit too hard at this point here. And I do go down. That's not great. But it's okay because we're still ahead and my team is still ahead as well. And if you saw there the scoreboard, my bot lane still has some kills, so it's not too bad. However, having said that, this is where things start getting ugly. And this is where I start getting pretty ugly as well. This is a really bad engage here by me. There's no point doing this. I wanted to force something while the tower was still up. But that was just stupid because my ultimate wasn't even up. And the tower just died as I went in anyway, so it's not like we even achieved anything by doing that play. This is a little bit of a ballsy play by the Jin as well, going a little bit too far forward just to get a bit of harass onto the Ivern, which obviously doesn't really lead into anything, and then, you know, it just forces a really bad fight from all, from all of us here, so that's not good. And to be honest, with the team comp that we have right here, whenever you have a rise, you kind of just need to wait a little bit, and we didn't do any of that here, so... Pretty bad play, I feel like, here. Uh, pretty bad game. It started off really well, 
but not great overall and to be honest like the lane phase went really well for me in this game and I did fine but as soon as the map started opening up a little bit it just all went to shit like I was 1-0-3 and then we had a bit of a bad play and I was 1-1-3 one, one, and, and then boom like the game just finished you know 10 minutes later and the game is over I was saying this is a fine game for us we're doing okay and then it just disappears so that's yeah I, you know that's a bit unfortunate but I think if we're going to take a look at the damage totals here you'll see that this is probably actually I don't remember how this game went I'm not sure it, this may be the game where I had the highest damage I can't remember let's have a look here is it the game where I have the highest damage and not even gonna <laughs> Okay, well, that's <laughs> must be thinking of another game. Ah, uh, here we go. A different champion, guys. Still the top lane, but a different champion. We're playing as Poppy top lane here. This is uh, what I resort to when Nautilus gets banned. Poppy is another simple top laner, but I can't play her to save my life. Because, well, you know, I can't... You know, I don't play her, so I can't play her. Uh, we had a really ugly game uh, to start off with here. You can see the kill score is really, really bad. Um, this Eve was trolling, if I remember correctly, like genuinely just like, you know, raging and all that shit and just whatever. So uh, she, and, and that, that play there is just a complete suicide and yeah, two kills to 13, I'm 0, 2 and 0. I try to go in on the enemy AD carry here, which honestly is quite close. He has the combat summoner in the heal though, which is a bit unfortunate, but and not great from that perspective. But still almost get in, but I can't, so that kind of sucks. And even in these team fights, we don't really have any redeeming factors here. The only redeeming factor we have here is the Syndra. As you can see, she presses one button and one shots someone. So outside of Syndra, there's not really much going on. And even then, it's like... I, I think that the way I was playing those team fights there, the one you just saw, wasn't necessarily too bad. Because if I just go in on the Caitlyn, then either I kill her, or you know I, I draw her attention from the enemy team, and then... No one, you know, our team benefits from that. You know, so, so it's all good, I think. And like this team fight here, I think I'm playing these skirmishes pretty well. The downside is that if you look at the minimap, we have nothing really going for us. We have no towers. Our base is getting demolished. And that's about it, really. So there's not really too much going on here. I see my window of opportunity to go in onto the Vi here. She's charging her Q and I can stun her up against the wall, but... This Vi is really fed, so it's not too bad focusing her, but to be honest, it's just too many... There's too many people for us to have to kill this game. Like, you have to go for the Caitlyn here, but you also have to go for the Vi. If I go in on Caitlyn, Vi charging that Q, she'll turn that on on, on like, my AD carry and one-shot them. Fiora is someone we can't let go by themselves because she's so strong. And then bloody Ari would... You know, everyone on their team is someone that we have to deal with. And in a game like that, disgusting. Not going to happen. But it's okay if I get put on a champion that I'm not that confident on. I just kind of want to learn how to play these champions. And I didn't do too badly this game, to be honest with you. Like you can see here, I mean, highest damage in the game on a champion that I... Literally my first game of the season on that champion. So not too bad, honestly. I think overall you can kind of say that, well, you know, could be a lot worse. But we're bringing out something here, boys, that you guys love watching me play Blitzcrank. The one, the only. A nice max range grab onto the Ez there. He flashes too late. He should have flashed as the hook was coming in, but he probably didn't expect it. But then we wait for him again, and we cheese him once more. Two kills in one minute onto the enemy AD carry. That guy must want to kill himself either run it down mid and just be like you know what i've had enough of my life and that's it or just afk farm something along those lines i don't think this guy has much will to live in this game anymore and another play <laughs> the grab on the uh, he's still level one we gotta get him again oh disgusting stuff it's a bit of a poor execution here trading one for one but it could be worse i suppose this is a play which we don't really want to force though. This is a bit of a risky tower dive. We don't really have anything to tank the tower with. And if we don't know what summoners are up and what summoners are down, it's still even riskier because you don't really know what you can get away with and what you can't. 
So whereas we do get rise, we end up losing two people for it. I don't really think that's worth it. Obviously, a one for two is not worth it, especially when you are quite ahead in the game. You don't want to be taking bad trades like that. So just chilling out a little bit, that would work pretty well. But still, it's all good. I play Blitzcrank because I can just, you know, not have to worry about shit. That is how you want to be playing Blitz as well, by the way. If you, Especially if you're against someone like Ez, who can cancel your grab just by using a escape of his own. What you need to do is just run up to them, punch them in the face, fart on them, and then grab them while they're in midair because that means they can't react to you. They, they genuinely just can't jump away from you because, you know, they're in the air. They're silenced, they're knocked up, they can't do it. So that's how you want to play against people like Ez. Against most people, you want to do, you want to lead with your, with your grab. Uh, sorry, you don't want to lead with your grab most of the time unless you have to. If you can walk up to them and punch them first, that's how you secure these safer grabs. A nice little play onto the rise as you saw under the tower there, just playing a little bit cheeky. Flash grabbing the Ez, which was a pretty spicy play, but of course he's Ez, so he just jumps away. So in the end, that's a bit of a waste of my flash. But still, whatever, it looked cool, so that's all that matters. Pushing in as a team as well, making things happen, that's all good. This Malzahar was a mid Malzahar, obviously, because I am the support this game, and he did fairly well. But he was also a little bit greedy, but you can see whenever, you, whenever you're whenever you playing a champion that revolves around pressing one button, pressing R, you can't really go too wrong with them. So that's all good. Now this game's a little bit different to the last game and a few games we've had on a C this session. And we're actually getting towers. Holy moly. How'd that happen? I don't know. It must be a bug or something like that. I'm not sure. But either way, it's looking a bit better for us this game. A little bit greedy by me here. I shouldn't be pushed up so far. If we have two people top lane, we know we can't fight in the mid lane either. So there's just no point, you know, there's no point tempting fate really, I shouldn't have died there, it's a bit pointless. But getting the pick onto the rise and before, which you didn't see, but you can see on the left hand side, Lee Sin is also dead. This means that we can go ahead and make a Baron play. Draven does it very fast, Kha'Zix does it very fast as well. Both people who take away Baron very, very efficiently, not too much to be worried of here, even though I'm actually the one who gets smite <laughs> with my fart. But still, not too bad, not too bad at all. And Blitzcrank continues to be my best champion in the game. So we're going to pull out another victory on this one and finish it off pretty much how we started by bullying the Ezra. So, again, if I just like for the item builds here, by the way, you'll probably see me build a lot of redemption on Blitzcrank, but I like to go for the Red Smite into the redemption. Always got movie boots as well, personally, I like that. But Red Smite, redemption. That's how I like to do my Blitz, so Cranky, I'll be getting a Locket afterwards most likely as well, but things like Night Spell work pretty well too. Diamond 3, 63 LB, not a bad place to be putting in. We're kind of winning and losing, winning and losing, winning and losing, so not an ideal situation. Chucking a cheeky report onto the Aurelia because she was abusing everyone in all chat. It's more damage than the enemy Lee Sin, so that's always something I suppose, <laughs> but still, there it is. So hopefully you enjoyed the video, boys and girls. Let me know what you thought about it down below. Thanks for watching. And I'll see you in my next video.